Today I'm going to go through how I make saga fired pottery in my simple homemade raku kiln. This is one of the pots that I made just recently in a saga firing. It's decorated using ferric chloride and various different chemicals and organic material too. And I fire it in a simple aluminium saga which I make myself and I'll go through all of the materials that I use and the way that I make the sagas as well. Here are some other pieces that I fired in the same firing. I use a mixture of different materials when I'm firing them and I don't know whether you can quite see on the camera there, I think you can, it's got quite a nice shine on it. I apply terra sigillata and then I bisque fire it, then I apply all the materials, put it in a saga and then once it's been through the raku fire then I polish it with some uh, wax and then buff it up and the wax that I use is called brie wax but you can use beeswax and various different um, finishes that you can put on there as well. So the first thing that I do is I let the pots dry out until they're bone dry and then I apply a few layers of terra sigillata I'll put a link in this video on how I make terra sigillata and as you can see I apply it by putting the piece on a banding wheel and using a mop brush and just applying an even coat just being careful to avoid the terra sigillata dripping down the side of the pot because if it drips uh, the drips usually show up once it's been fired so just applying a nice even coating and then when I get down to the base, what I do is I use a, um, an old piece of bisque and uh, put the rag on top just to stop the bisque from scratching the surface of the, the terra sigillata and then just apply an even coating to the base as well or to the bottom, of the, to the bottom edge of the pot. So I usually apply about two or three coats And then when I've applied the two or three coats, I just buff it up with a, a lint-free dusting cloth. And that tends to bring it up with a really nice shine. And as I say, this has been applied to bone dry clay. So these are the pots that I'm going to fire in the Saga firing. They've all got a coating of terra sigillata on them. This is me loading up the electric kiln and I do, the day before I bisque fire it, I do a three hour preheat at 90 degrees centigrade or 194 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, it is now half past four in the morning and I am just heading towards my pottery shed. I don't know whether you can see that but I'm unlocking the door, it's very dark. Unlocking the door, very dark, and very frosty as well. So the kiln has been loaded. I don't know whether I've been. I don't know whether I can open this with one hand, so I'm not going to. It's all in there. It was candling yesterday for a few hours. Um, so all I need to do now, it's all loaded. 80 to 600, no hold, 150 to 995, okay, that's fine, right, okay, well, we're good to go then, I think that's going to take about 10 hours to fire, so it's now 4.30 in the morning, um, yeah, 4.30, <laughs> in the morning. Um, yeah, so it should be done by 2.30, um, which is why I'm up so early, because I need to leave at um, about quarter to three this afternoon, and I want the kiln to be off by the, time I, by the time I go out. Anyway, I'm going to go and get some coffee now. Oh, that's the dog barking. I'm going to get some coffee now. See you later.
turn that light on. So once everything's been bisque fired, I have to get my materials together. This is a bottle of ferric chloride and I've got a plastic sheeting down on the table because the ferric chloride, it stains wood and also if it gets in contact with metal, it will corrode metal. It's used as fluid um, etching fluid for metal, so you want to avoid it making any contact with anything that it's going to dissolve. So I pour some into a plastic jug and then pour it over each of the pieces of bisque-fired pottery. Um, it's a little bit easier to handle the pots that have got a wider neck because you can pop two fingers inside the wide neck and then hold them that way. But it's okay to just put your hands on the outside of the pot because you can put a few, you can pour it over a few times and get a, a reasonable cover. It's also um, a skin irritant as well, so you do need to wear gloves whilst you're handling this, this stuff. So I just apply uh, one coat of ferric chloride to each of the pieces and then let them, let that absorb. And then if anything goes inside the pot, I just turn it upside down and let it drain out again. Mainly because I want the pot to dry out really well before I make the saga and it just dries out quicker. Once I've applied the first coat, then I start to get my materials together. This is miracle Grow, which I've put into a salt shaker. That is copper sulfate, which is also in a salt shaker. And that is iron sulfate. That's a bowl of sugar, and that is some Epsom salts. So the next thing that I do is I just apply a second coating of the ferric chloride. And rather than letting this coat dry, what I do is I then apply the uh, the chemicals that I've just described to you directly onto the wet surface so that the granules stick. So that's a little bit of, of sugar which I'm just sprinkling on there. I don't put too much sugar on it because it will um, it can go quite black on the pot but a little sprinkling is quite nice. And then just sort of sprinkle on the various different components and just experiment really and see what you like the look of. I use the salt shakers because if you put your rubber gloves into the mixture, into the granules, it transfers ferric chloride into the into the granules and it sort of ruins the batch of granules that you've got, whether it's copper sulfate or iron sulfate. It doesn't really matter so much with the sugar because that can just go in the bin, but anything that has cost you any money to buy, it's best to put it in a shaker and then you can just shake it directly onto the pot without sticking your fingers into a bowl of it and ruining it. So just give it a bit of a dusting and like I say just experiment with the quantities and see what you think looks nice when it's been fired. And that's all the pots when they've been, they've all had a coating of the various different substances, the granules that I've just described. And they're drying in the sun, it's really important that they dry before you make the sagas, because like I said, the saga is made of aluminium, and if the wet ferric chloride gets in contact with the aluminium, it'll dissolve it, which you don't want. So I've cleaned down the surface of the plastic sheet, got rid of any of the ferric chloride that had splashed on it and now I'm just tearing off a sheet of aluminium and unless you've got a very large sheet of aluminium you probably need to double up and take off two pieces like that and 
then using uh, your fingers and palms just scrunch up the foil a bit to create a bit of a texture on the foil. This stops the foil from sitting absolutely directly on the surface, flat against the surface of the pot and it creates a bit of a texture um, to contain the various different materials that you're using. And then with this particular pot I'm putting a little bed of sawdust, just wood chip sawdust from pet shop, there's nothing special about it, a pet shop is fine. Just put a little amount on the foil and then position the pot on top of that. And it's best not to use too much of the sawdust because it does make the surface of the pot quite black and if you put too much in there then you'll end up with an entirely black pot. But just a small amount at the bottom is quite nice because it gives the base of the pot a black look, uh, which is a nice contrast with the orange of the, the um, ferric chloride. And then I'm just using some seaweed there, which I got from the beach at Chichester in the UK. Um, so it's got a bit of salt in it, obviously, from the seawater. Um, I think that that particular seaweed is called bladderwrack, but I might be wrong about that. I'd have to check that. Um, so just position it on there and then wrap the foil around the pot keeping everything in place and pressing it against the side of the pot but not so much that you're going to knock off the chemicals that you applied earlier on. So applying it firmly but not squashing it too much basically. And then when it's a nice little aluminium cocoon just put it to one side and then just repeat the process with the other pots that you've got and you can experiment with various different combustible materials as you can see I'm using a bit of straw there and you know the effect that these things have seems to vary at different times when I fire different times um, that's a bit of copper wire which you can wrap around the pot. I'm just, as you can see what I'm doing is I'm making a little hook out of the end there and then hooking it around the top edge of the pot and then wrapping it around. And the copper wire is a bit springy and it's a bit difficult to keep in place, but you can just pin it in place with your fingers and then when you're holding it in place, just wrap the, um, wrap the foil around it, around the pot to create another saga. And you can use all sorts of different materials when you're experimenting, like I know people use coffee grounds and banana peels, dried banana peels and corn husks and all sorts of things. Just try things out. For example, that is a piece of string or twine, if you like, that's been soaked in some salty water, water solution and then dried out and just draped around the pot. And that's just a little one that doesn't have any sawdust or anything in it, but that is a piece of horsehair which you can't really see, but it's a, a long strand of horsehair that is being wrapped around the pot. And the horsehair you can get obviously if you live or work on a farm, that's great, but if not you can buy it um, on Amazon. You can Amazingly you can buy little packets of horsehair on Amazon. I've got a feeling that people buy it to string their violin bows and stuff. Anyway, this is my uh, Raku kiln which I built. It's a fairly simple Raku kiln and if you want to know how I built it I'll put a link in the video to my video on making your own DIY kiln. That is the kiln that's been loaded with sagas. I haven't put all of them in there. 
um, I didn't want to put um, I didn't want to stack them so I did two firings to fire all of the sagas that I made um, on this particular occasion that is a, a thermocouple that I've just put into the into the side of the kiln there so I can monitor the temperature as I'm firing and I plug the thermocouple into a pyrometer this is pyrometer and this particular pyrometer is set to read in centigrade rather than Fahrenheit if you're wondering about the numbers so the lid goes on the kiln and then before I start firing I remember to put on my respirator which is really important because when you're firing the ferric chloride sagas it gives off fumes that you don't want to inhale and I also wear safety goggles as well because um, I get quite at times when I'm trying to hold the temperature of the kiln I'm quite close to the kiln and frankly I want to keep my eyeballs intact if anything goes wrong um, so yeah just firing away and the bricks around the kiln actually are because it was a bit of a windy day not really windy but there was a bit of a breeze and the breeze tends to blow the flame on the burner and it can be quite difficult to get the temperature up in the kiln when there is a breeze blowing. My target temperature when I'm saga firing is 750 degrees centigrade which is 1382 degrees Fahrenheit. This kiln gets hot really quickly. If the burner is turned up high it'll get hot. It would reach that temperature within 15 minutes and I want it to take longer than that. I normally aim for this firing to take about about 35-40 minutes. Um, so I spend quite a bit of the time whilst the firing is going on adjusting the, the, the control on the burner. You can see that's what I'm doing. I'm putting my hand through the breeze box because there's a little controller on the side of the, the, the burner which you can adjust just to make sure that the temperature doesn't race ahead really quickly. So the temperature as you can see now is about 650 degrees centigrade which is about 1211 degrees Fahrenheit. It's firing away nicely and actually what I do around this time um, is I put a little bit of the ceramic fibre that lines the kiln on top of the flue, on top of the, the opening on top of the lid just to keep, to retain some of the heat. So once I've reached the target temperature of 750 degrees centigrade, i.e. 1382 degrees Fahrenheit, I turn the heat off on the kiln. Now what I've done so far when I've been turning off the kiln is I have just turned it off at the burner head and then turned it off at the gas canister. But actually somebody recently pointed out to me that it, the safer thing to do is to turn it off on the cylinder itself and then turn the and, and let the flame die out gradually as the gas runs out in the hose rather than turning it off at the burner head and the reason for that apparently is because the pressure if you turn it off at the burner head then the gas from the cylinder is still entering the hose and putting pressure on the fittings in the burner head um, which apparently is not ideal. So that was a good tip and that's what I'm going to do going forward. Anyway, I turn the burner off and then I let the kiln cool to 300 degrees centigrade which is around 570 degrees Fahrenheit. Take the lid off the kiln and with my raku tongs I lift the sagas carefully out of the kiln and put them on some bricks. At this point the aluminium will be quite crumbly. On some of the pots it will have almost completely crumbled away and on others it's more, more intact but it's quite thin and fragile and dry and flaky at this point because it's, it melts at around melts and burns at around 660 degrees centigrade so it should have be it should be collapsing by this point so these are the pots as you can see 
Um, in fact, the saga's come off one of them and the other ones, it just flakes off pretty easily. And the pots are still hot at this point, so I'm using kiln gloves because, as you can see, you can see they're still, they're still smoking. So just peel away the sagas and any bits of wire or and dust away any bits of debris. And as the oxygen hits the surface of the pots, the colours will continue to change and deepen and develop. So this is how I polish my saga pottery once it's been fired. I, if it's a bit crusty after the firing, what I'll do is I might rinse it out underneath a tap, but I don't really give it much of a clean. I just rinse off the any leftover debris or carbon that might be on there. And then I use this Brie Wax, which is a wax polish, furniture wax polish, which can be used on wood or on stone. And it's clear and it comes up with a nice sheen and I think it's probably got beeswax in it but it's also got chemicals in it because it does recommend not getting it directly on your skin so I use rubber gloves when I'm applying it just opening it up with one of my crummy old trimming tools that's what it looks like inside it's all waxy paste and then I use an old duster just load, load a bit up on the duster and then choose the pot that I'm going to, this one's already been waxed but I'm going to show you the process anyway. So I just put the wax onto the pot and as you put the wax on it goes a dull colour, the wax makes it dull. And I usually wax the pots, I put a couple of coats of wax on anyway, sometimes three if I want to, and this is the th third coat that this one's had. So it just adds to the shine. And it gives it a nice satin sheen rather than a glossy finish. It's not like, you know, you can spray your saga pots with acrylic spray, but I find that gives it too much of a glossy kind of varnish look, and I prefer the more sort of organic waxed look. So then once you've applied the wax all over, then you just need to leave it for a little while until it, the wax hardens up and then you can polish it. So once the wax hard, what I do is I get a clean, soft, lint-free rag or duster and then just buff it up. and it comes up with a nice shine pretty quickly. And I can spend, you know, I usually do this when I don't have very much else to do and I can just sit and zone out a little bit. And 
And actually what can be quite helpful is to put it on a flat surface. It's a bit tiring doing it with your hand. Just do it like that. And you can see it comes up with quite a nice shine pretty quickly. And here are the finished pots. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and then you'll get a notification next time I upload something new. Thanks for watching. Bye.